So in this quick uh, section, we'll look at some problems with formulas. So first of all, let's talk about a couple of vocabulary words. The amount of money that's borrowed is called principal. And the amount of money charged for using that money is called the interest. So this problem says Bill invested $6,000 $6, of his lottery winnings into a three-month certificate of deposit that earns 9% simple interest per annum. Find the amount of, of interest Bill's investment will earn at the end of three months. Also find the total amount of money Bill will have at the end of three months. So to find the interest, we need to take the principal times the rate, and then we'll look at how to figure that out. Um, for the three months. This per annum means per year. Okay. So this $6,000 is our principal and this 9% is our rate. So the interest for a year will be $6,000 times 9%. But we don't want to put 9% in here. We want to change that to a decimal. Remember to change 9% to a decimal. We take 9 and we divide by 100. That's what that percent sign really means, divided by 100. So we end up with 0 0.09. So if we take 0 0.09 times 6,000, or 6,000 times 0 0.09, we find out the interest is $540 for one year. But he didn't do it for a whole year. He did it for three months. So we have to figure out how much of a year is three months. So three out of 12 months, right? So it's three out of 12 for a whole year times 540. So you can do that in your calculator, three divided by 12 or three fraction 12 times 540. And that gives us the interest of 135. So in three months he gets $135 interest. So that's the first part of this. The first part says find the interest he'll earn at the end of three months. Now the next part says find the total amount. So the total amount is the amount that he started with, the principal, plus this interest. The interest is extra on top of the principal. So his total amount is $6,135. Google shows the temperature in Paris to be 27 degrees Celsius. Use the formula F equals 9 fifths C plus 32, where F is in degrees Fahrenheit and C is degrees Celsius, to find the approximate Paris temperature in degrees Fahrenheit. So, let's start by writing down this formula. F is equal to 9 fifths C plus 32. Now we know what we want the C to be. The C is 27. So we'll put that in place of C. Okay, and we can do this in our calculator. You can take 9 fraction 5 times 27, and we get 243 over 5 plus 32. Now it says approximate here, and the directions after the answer in your homework will tell you exactly how they want the answer, but let's do this as a decimal. So let's take 243 and divide by 5. So if I take 243 and divide by 5, I get 48.6. So this is really 48.6 plus 32. We get that this is equal to 80.6 degrees Fahrenheit. So 27 degrees Celsius is the same as 80.6 degrees Fahrenheit. A literal equation is an equation that has several letters in it. The problem is going to tell us which letter we need to get by itself. You solve the equation just like we did in the last sections. 
So for example, we have x equals nt. I'm still going to draw my line down here. It says solve for n, which means n is the letter I want to have by itself. Generally, that tells us to leave n alone and move the things away from it. So we look at what's happening. We have n times t. So if I don't want that t there, I need to divide by t. And that cancels it out. That leaves me with n over here. And then x divided by t, we usually write like that in fraction form. And this is the answer to my problem. I get n is equal to x over t. So here's another one. I have n is equal to 9 eighths p plus 25. And the problem tells me I want p by itself. Draw my line down here. So the first thing is I want to move things away from p. So I'm going to deal with this plus 25 first. So I'll subtract 25 from both sides. So on the left, I just read that as it was. The n was there first, so I need to write it first. n minus 25 is equal to 9 eighths p. Okay. Now, this is 9 eighths times p, so I need to do the opposite. I need to divide by 9 eighths and divide this whole side by 9 eighths. Now this is where it's helpful to remember that dividing by a fraction is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. So divide by 9 eighths really means 8 ninths times n minus 25 equals p. And the thing with literal fractions is a lot of times we don't do any work to simplify things. We kind of just leave it. So we'll just leave it like that p is by itself, and that's the main thing we want. I'll try a few more. So this kind of problem we'll see a lot. We have 8x minus 4y equals 12, and it says to solve for y, and that becomes a really important idea in the next couple chapters, actually the next chapter. So the idea here is that we need to move the 8x first. So it's really positive 8x, or plus 8x, and so we're going to minus 8x and minus 8x. So we have a minus 4y over here. Now on the right-hand side, in algebra, we usually like to have the x part first. So I'm going to write minus 8x first, and then it's 12, it's a positive 12, so it's really plus 12. I'm just changing the order of those a little bit because in the next chapter that will help us. Then I need to divide by negative 4 to get y by itself. Now when I divide over on the right hand side, I want to divide everything by negative 4. We can also show that by dividing each piece by negative 4. And in the next chapter that will help us too. So here I get y equals and then here I'd have negative 8 divided by negative 4 is a 2x. And then 12 divided by negative 4 is a negative 3. So y is equal to 2x minus 3. Here I have y equals 1 8 in k. And it tells me I want n by itself. So n's kind of stuck in the middle there. So let's deal with that 1 8 first. It's multiplied, so we want to divide by 1 8. But this is another fraction, and I really want us to think about that this really means times the reciprocal. So instead of dividing by 1 8, I end up having 8 over 1 times y equals nk. Flipping that fraction over and becomes multiplication. So let me just write that one more time. 8y equals nk. A lot of times when we have fractions, we're going to move them first um, so that we get other things uh, a little, so it looks a little simpler. The fraction is gone now. So I still want n by itself. This is multiplication, so I'm going to divide by the letter I don't want, the k. So that leaves me with 8y over k equals n, or n equals 8y 
over k. The side that the n is on or the letter is on doesn't matter. We'll look at one more. We have p is equal to b plus a plus 3c. And it tells me I want b by itself. Okay, so we'll look at this. This says b plus a, so let's start by minusing that a. That leaves me on the left with p minus a equals b plus 3c. Now the next thing is I don't want that 3c there. It's plus, so I'm going to subtract it. Which leaves me, again, read it in order. This was p, p minus a. So we wrote p minus a. Now it's minus c, 3c. So we'll do p minus a minus 3c equals b. The stuff that was there first has to stay first. And that's our answer.